Hi, and welcome back to Let's Talk Forex with Alison and Chris. This week, we're going to be discussing scalping. Uh, it's the first in our uh, mini-series on trading strategies. We're going to be looking at day trading and positional trading, too, in the coming weeks. Hope you enjoy it. Remember, you can always get in touch with us. Um, you can find our emails on uh, fxscouts.com and tradeforexsa.co.za. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks so much and enjoy the episode. Hey, how are you doing today, Chris? Yeah, I'm pretty good, Alison. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's a lovely day today and um, yeah, just looking forward to getting into our episode. Um, how, how's it going with you? Yeah, good, thanks. Absolutely fine. Um, had a good weekend. Fantastic. And what is it? It's uh, We're recording on a Tuesday. Yeah, not much to relate other than that. Yeah. Okay. Well, today we are going to um, be talking about different trading strategies. And uh, this is the first part of our mini series. And today we're going to be talking about scalping. And uh, in the next two episodes, so in, in the next two weeks after this, we're going to be talking about day trading and positional trading. So um, I guess let's get into it. Yeah, absolutely. Scalping. Um, what is it? What is scalping? Um, a lot of, I'm sure most of our listeners have heard the term um, scalping. And uh, it's not, you know, the, um, well, it is also part where you lose, your, lose the top of your head. But, uh, <laughs> but in forex trading, it's not, it's not losing the top of your head, hopefully anyway. <laughs> um, scalping is, uh, <laughs> scalping is, is a, it's a trading strategy. I mean, and, and I think a good analogy is, um, is like if you're buying tickets for a game that is likely to be sold out and then like the World Cup final or something and then you're and then you go sell those tickets immediately after you bought them at the at the gate to the game mm. so you're getting in and out so it's a very fast uh, quick way of of making money mm. um so it's a short term trading strategy and people use it to to profit from very small fluctuations um, and because it's so short term, like a lot of scalpers will use on, if you look on charts and your time frames, they'll use the one minute and they use five minute and 15 minute, uh, time frames because they're wanting to get in and get out again, uh, as quickly as possible. And, and as a result, um, scalpers tend to be very technical traders and you're going to be trading uh, many times a day. So as a res- there's a certain kind of mindset you need. You need to be able to react very quickly to changing market conditions and you have to have a good strategy. This is essential for scalping because you're going to be trading so often, your risk levels are going to be quite high. Yeah. So, so in that risk, you need to make sure that that risk is as low as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, and as you say, you need to react quickly, and you need to definitely have a strategy in place. Um, mm-hmm. And sometimes scalpers can find it quite frustrating um, because they're in and out after a minute of, and sometimes after a minute of being right. Um, if they'd held that position, they may have made more money, um, like in positional or train trading. Um, so we find that a lot of scalpers find it quite stressful. Because you have to watch the markets so carefully and you have to be able to predict a very short sort of price um, differences. Um, mm-hmm. So a lot, of, a lot of beginners make the mistake of thinking that scalping is good for, for those with um, only a little bit of time, you know, because you're in and out uh, in one to five minutes sometimes. But because you're only making very small amounts of money, you have to spend a lot of time to make a reasonable profit. And obviously this is this is particularly true for beginners who might be starting with very small sort of capital amounts. To make anything worthwhile, you'll have to be there for many hours at a time. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, uh, yeah, you're not going to make a huge amount if you've got a small account, you know, so let's say you're starting out with, I don't know, 200 or 400 dollars in your account, um, you're not going to make very much money scalping. No. Um, so you're going to have to be sitting there for ages. And and this is why like scalping doesn't suit a lot of people's lifestyle you have to make sure if you're going to be a scalper you need to make sure you've got to you're going to be able to sit there for hours at a time and also to make sure that it suits your personality um a lot of people one thing people don't really discuss don't talk about with scalping is how exhausting it is you know you're sitting at your desk for hours at a time you're on tender hooks you know you're you're literally watching your uh, watching these charts 
waiting for the right movement to strike, you know, waiting for the right moment to strike. And so you must, and you must be ready all the time to react to price action movements. Yeah. And that's really stressful. It's really exhausting and it's time consuming. Mm. Um, as you said, uh, and so, you know, so scalping isn't for everyone, but there's lots of other types of trading. I think, you know, you said like, we're going to, we're going to talk about day trading and positional trading, which we'll discuss uh, later on. And with, with scalping, the entry and exit levels are very important because getting these rights can make, can essentially make the difference between winning and losing. So if you, yeah. in shorter time frames, the price has very predictable properties. So um, it often moves more during a particular time of the day, like with market news um, events and with market openings. Those are two very important um, times that, that you'll see price action sort of movement. And for experienced traders who understand this, you know, these strategies well enough, um, it can be a good strategy to make money in the Forex market. A lot of the guys that you see on YouTube these days who, who are making money are scalpers and they have very good strategies in place. But again, they've probably got high capital and they've, they really do know what they're doing and they know exactly you know, what resistance and support levels to they're looking at and, and they, they use those, those indicators well enough that they're just not as um, fallible as, as beginners might be in doing the same sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. These guys, I mean, the technical analysis is pinpoint. And as you say, like in these short time frames, um, it's easier to analyze the market technically and, and yeah. predict which, which way the price is going to go. Um, and, you know, if you've got all these tools these days, you'll be, um, you can, you can, these guys can do it quite well. But in order to be successful with scalping, I mean, we're just going to go through a few, a few rules of scalping if you want to give it a shot yourself. Um, so the first one, uh, so we've got, we, we've put, we've put six down here today. There's, mm. um, which I think are, that probably covers all, everything. Uh, the first is, so you need to watch your spread and you need to watch your commissions. Because you're scalping, uh, so because when you're with scalping, you're in and out. You know, you're trading so many times a day. The spread is really going to impact your profit, um, and commissions will really impact your, impact your profit. So always factor this in to your scalping strategy. The second thing I would say is uh, don't scalp the announcement. So yes, so market announcements are going to make a big be a big part of your scalping strategy, but avoid scalping the market during the news announcement, and focus instead on the post news. Uh, look for look for price follow through uh, in the direction of the initial market reaction, or if the price is fading, ready to change a view and then and take the other side. Um, but yeah, it's it's often an error to scalp the original announcement. Scalp high liquid pairs. Uh, focus your trading on the major currency pairs with the most significant liquidity. It's important. So Euro USD, USD JPY, uh, JPB USD. Uh, you know the, the 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 big majors. These are pairs that have got a lot of high volume. And they should be the pairs um, that you know a lot of other people are trading, because otherwise you're not going to see too much movement. And so, and it, with a currency pair that's less liquid, it's going to affect your ability to scalp because the price will be more erratic, and the spread is going to be wider. Uh, so it's much harder to see technical, make technical predictions, and your spread is you know you're going to lose a lot more money in the spread. Um, it's also important to think about the time of day uh, with with these big with these big currency pairs. Um, there are going to be times of day when the market is more active. So, like mm -hmm. the crossover between the London and the New York uh, markets, uh, you're going to see the Euro USD is going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of movement. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, the as you say, there's uh, three well, there's sort of three major uh, trading sessions. So you've got the London session, which opens at eight. GMT, 8 a.m. GMT. Then you've got the New York session that opens at 1 p.m. GMT. And then you've got the Tokyo session, which opens at um, 12 at night, um, all GMT. And uh, if, you know, as the market opens, you'll obviously see higher trading volumes start to happen. And this is often a time also when you'll see breaks in the support or resistance levels. So that's also something to be aware of. A lot of scalpers then will trade as as those markets open because they'll see a higher volume and they know from a psychological point of view that's when those those resistance and support levels will break. Then you also want to obviously brush up on your technical analysis and you want to use technical indicators. So you have 
indicators that are split into two groups. You've got the momentum and you have the support and resistance um, indicators. So some examples of momentum indicators are the stochastic oscillator, then the MACD, which is a very popular one, the moving average convergence divergence indicator, and then you have the RSI or the relative strength index indicator. Um, so these are the three very popular momentum indicators, and you can find a lot of information online about how to use these and, and where it's appropriate to use them and uh, how and when they converge for you to make a decision. Then it, your support and resistance indicators include Kultner channels, moving averages, and pivot points. Then you have two types of moving averages. You have moving averages and you have EMAs or exponential moving averages. And those are also very um, well used uh, by many sculptors. Mm -hmm. um, so our sixth point is develop a strategy and stick to it. And this is probably one of the most important parts of, of sculpting. So as an example... Uh, you want to buy at breakouts. This is, you know, this will be a strategy that most scalpels will use, um, but you'll sell quickly if the price moves against you. Then the next point that we emphasize every time we talk about uh, trading strategies is set a stop loss and keep it tight. Most traders set, or most scalpers set it just below the recent lows or highs, um, depending on which direction you're trading. And then if you have a daily goal, take three to five trades until your goal has been reached. So, and then stop. Um, if you've made your daily goal, don't over trade because that's often when, when you'll lose money is either putting more, more money than you, you sort of used to trading in because you sort of feeling good about it um, or just taking on too many trades for the day. And that's also, you've got to factor in, as you spoke about earlier, Chris, the fact that you will be paying commissions and you will be paying the spread every time you open and close your trades. Um, mm -hmm. And that obviously affects your, your profitability. So just be aware of how many times you're trading, you know, if you've, if you've hit that daily goal. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. And so basically, I think what we're saying here is with the strategy is stick to it. I mean, it, it takes discipline, yeah. uh, scalping. Mm -hmm. And so, and this is what we were saying, uh, saying earlier about it being stressful, you know, so it takes a long, lot of time. You've got to be on point throughout, probably very caffeinated, um, you know, for hours at a time. And you've got to have this, you know, iron will to keep to this trading strategy. Yeah. It's not an easy strategy. I mean, a lot of people yeah. do it. Um, and it's, it's, um, and it is, it is very reliable. I mean, it's pretty reliable. Once you get good at scalping, you're going to make money, but it's not easy. It's all, also important to realize um, what kind of broker you need uh, for, for scalping because not all brokers will suit and and frankly not all brokers will allow scalping mm. um, i can think of a few at the top of my head so make sure that if you are going to try a scalping strategy make sure you find one um, that allows scalping it's an important thing other important to look for is as we mentioned before is very tight spreads and very low commissions and you want a reliable broker i'd recommend using one of the one of the big brokers you want you know you don't want to lose your connection to the market in the middle of a scalp trade and if you're really serious about scalping, then you're going to want a broker with a VPS, a virtual private server, that is, you know, very close to the exchanges, because this will re further reduce latency. Mm -hmm. And most, and if you're serious about scalping, you know, you're probably going to be using algos. It's probably going to be algorithmic trading. So, it's, and that's going to improve your speeds having a v having a VPS. There's also a lot of trading tools that can help with scalping. Um, one of our favorites, uh, Allison, is Auto Chartist. Yeah. Um, it scans pretty much all CFD markets, and it'll show you technical setups on a range of on a range of timeframes and a range of uh, and a range of pro a range of um, CFDs. Because as a scalper, you don't really care about what you're trading. You know, mm -hmm. this isn't you know this is just about finding patterns and taking advantage of it. Um, is there anything else you can think of you'd recommend in a broker, Alison? Um, well, if I think about it, a lot of um... You'd want then, just on, on that last point you made, you'd want a broker with lots of CFDs to trade so that you have more yep. opportunities to trade those instruments um, that auto charters might highlight with high volatility and high liquidity. And then, Chris, trading on your favorite, Sea Trader. We'd always recommend that because it has a trailing stop loss that functions on the broker side. So unlike MT4 and MT5, that have the trading stop losses on the terminal side, i.e. on the trader's side, um, which means that you have to have your computer on at all times 
or your terminal running at all times to to activate the, that the the trailing stop loss on C Trader. If you need to get up and go away, you know, and, and uh, see to something else, um, the stop loss will be in place, and you you won't have to worry about it. Yeah. So from that perspective, we you know we particularly like um, brokers that offer C Trader uh, for this yep. very reason. We're slowly going to convert all our listeners to C Trader, Alison. <laughs> this is my goal. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'll get there. Yeah, no, no, it's, but it's true. It's really important, especially if you're scalping. You know, you want you if you have to get up away from your desk when you're scalping, um, you want to be able to, you want to have your uh, trailing stop loss in place, yeah, or if you're on your phone or whatever. And if you don't want to close a position at that very moment, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So I think that just about covers it for today. Um, yeah, that's a breakdown of scalping. Um, and so next week, I think, which one, what are we doing next week? We're going to talk about day trading next week. This yes. is another trading strategy, a very broad trading strategy. Mm. Um, but I think maybe one that a lot of beginners will find easier. Yeah. Um, yeah, great. Well, thanks for your time today, Alison. Yeah, um, I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, I'll chat to you next week.